All right, go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Beyond the Beat YouTube video. My name is Owen, and today I'm going to be talking about the essentials if you guys want to start making a home recording studio. I'm going to be talking about everything from the gear you'd want to the software you'd need and everything in between. So let's just dive right into it. So when starting a home studio, the first thing you're going to need is a laptop. Virtually, everyone these days has a laptop. When you're starting out your home studio, probably whatever you have is going to be you know, your best option. Personally, I have a 15 inch MacBook Pro. I think it's the 2014. I got the 15 inch display option when I was going to school. Uh, for audio engineering simply because I wanted the bigger screen for when I was editing and mixing my music. And with that being said, you know, for right now, for you, anything will do. The second thing you'll need is a DAW. A DAW is a digital audio workstation and basically this is the software that you're going to be doing everything in. This is where you're going to be recording your music, your instruments, your editing, your arranging, your producing. This is where it's going to happen. Even though there's a lot of pro options a great free option is GarageBand. GarageBand comes on all MacBooks and Macintosh devices. Great user-friendly layout that easily learn how to use plugins, and sending levels, and mixing, arranging, and it comes free, which is awesome. When you're starting out a home studio, you know you don't want to spend a lot of money because you know down the road you may not, you know realize you don't like it, and so you don't want to be spending a lot of money right off the bat in something that you may not end up liking. The next thing you're going to want for your home studio is your audio interface. The interface is the hardware that gets your guitar or your microphone into your software. A great option for a starter interface is the Focusrite Scarlett 212, which is two in and two out. This interface allows you to have two mic inputs as well as two guitar inputs. It's relatively cheap. It's a $200 allows for some really great quality. These two items, your DAW and your audio interface, can be bought separately or as a combo. For beginners like yourself, I would recommend buying the combo for three main reasons. One, it's one less item to buy. Two, it's cheaper than buying them separately. Three, you got guaranteed compatibility. You know that the software is automatically going to work with the hardware. Next up, we're going to talk about speakers. In Pro Audio, commonly known as studio monitors, these are what you're going to use to hear your stuff. When comparing studio monitors to your basic household speaker, um, characteristics are different. It comes to the speakers that you would have in your home sound system or a docking station. They've got qualities that add sort of an enhancement to, to make it an enjoyable listening experience. When it comes to studio monitors, they have uh, flattened frequencies to give you an uncolored, honest mix. And when it comes to mixing your music, that's what you want. You want an honest representation of what you are making is telling you. And yes, you're going to do a lot of your mixing on your studio monitors, but when you're testing your mix, you're going to want to try it out on all different platforms. Car speakers, your phone, all that. Wow studio monitors can get pricey uh, going into you know, the pro standards such as Folk House. Um, there's a lot of affordable options to get you started. You can buy them in pairs or you can buy them individually. When I started back when I was you know, 14 or 15 years old, I had a pair of M-Audio AV32 compact desk monitors and they costed $120 and those got me going all the way until I got to college. After I got rid of my M audios, I upgraded to probably what we would consider an intermediate or first step into the pros. Here we've got the Rocket 5 KRKs, um, they're generation 3, they're really awesome. Each one of these costs about $250 a piece. For the price of each one, you're really getting a bang for your buck. Next we're going to be talking about microphones. When it comes to buying a microphone for your first studio, it really comes down to what you plan to be recording. Are you going to be recording you know, acoustic guitar? Are you going to be recording vocals? For a lot of people, when they're starting out a home studio, they generally want to be focused around their vocals. When it comes to vocals, you would want a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Personally, my vocals suck. So when I was buying my first condenser microphone, I bought this Audio-Technica AT2020. Great little condenser microphone, significantly cheap in price. As I got better, 
with my vocals I wanted to upgrade. When I moved from the Audio Technica AT2020, I moved on to the Rode NT1A. Now, this microphone is really, really awesome. It's a condenser microphone. It's super quiet. It's got flat frequencies, got a nice curve and pickup pattern. And the cool thing about this is, is which, and what, when it comes with the shock mount and the pop filter, you're gonna really want a pop filter because this is really gonna cut down all the puss and kss when you're recording your vocals. It's like $300 you can get it from any local music shop and all that. If you're planning on recording electric guitar, electric basses, and amps and all that, what you're gonna want is a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphone is great when you're recording instruments with high transients, such as you know a snare drum hit or an electric guitar amp. It's really good at controlling the sound and you know the microphone's good at handling any of those piercing sounds. Lucky for all of us, this microphone is super cheap and it's industry standard. It goes for you know $110. Obviously for all of that, you're gonna want a mic stand to hold the mic. Next up, we're gonna be talking about cans. When you're starting now, a lot of the times you're gonna be recording by yourself. So you're gonna want a pair of really good headphones. When it comes to buying headphones, there's two kinds, closed back or there's open back. Closed back headphones offer optimal isolation, although you get lesser sound quality. Open back headphones offer optimal sound quality at the expense of lesser isolation. While open backs are considered more of a luxury, for your first studio, you're probably gonna wanna go with closed backs. Great pair of closed back headphones for your first studio are the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro closed back headphones. Go for about $129 and they're just awesome. If you want to go with the open back headphones, I have a pair of AKG uh, 240 MK2s. They are absolutely awesome. You can hear the real detail and clarity in all your mixes. After a great pair of headphones, you're going to want a keyboard. Keyboard is a great addition to your first home studio. It's going to allow you to play instruments that you don't physically have. You can load in sounds to make your, your keyboard sound like, yeah, a piano. It can also be a bass, trumpet, saxophone, clarinet, synth, everything you can think of. It's going to really allow you to take your creative juices and just run with it. A great option for your first MIDI keyboard purchase would be an Akai MPK MIDI 2. It's a 25 note drum machine slash keyboard and it goes for about $130. I had one when I first started out and it really, really let me just hone my creativity. That being said, that's basically all the major pieces of equipment and software that you're going to want to start your home studio. Don't forget all the cables that you're going to need to plug everything in, everything from your XLRs for your microphones to your patch cables, your quarter inches for your guitars. In the future, you guys want to learn any more about home studio, you can pick up books like Home Recording for Musicians. You can get these from your, your local chapters or Indigo, and they, they really do help. So with that being said, I just want to thank you guys for tuning into this video. If you guys want to learn more about Beyond the Beat Music School and Studios, I'm going to leave their information down below in the description. I'm also going to leave all of the links for all the products in the description down below. Thank you guys again. My name is Owen, and I'll see you next time. Whee!